So I was doing a bit of work on my Rust malware project. Um, all of that you can find in the playlist down in the description. And I realized that I could kind of take part of what I was working on out and build its own kind of project with it. And that was a process explorer using Rust. I've done this before. I did it in C, C++ before um, and learned a lot about the Windows API through it. It was frustrating. And frankly, this was the first time that I ran into some frustrations with Rust. Um, they weren't nearly as bad as my frustrations with C and C++ because that's just kind of the theme. But basically, that's, that's kind of where I kind of started to run into some of the quirks being a little bit more annoying. It is also the five billionth time that my ass has gotten saved by a, a game hacker. So we're going to go into all of that here in a second, but basically that's that's what this video is all about. It's, more, it's about process enumeration, it's about getting process handles, things like that with the Windows API using Rust. So if we pop over here, um, we're going to start with a little bit of Blackboard. Um, so the general high level breakdown of how process enumeration with the Windows API works is you start with enumerating the PIDs. You don't need any input into the enumerate processes function in order to enumerate the PID. So that is your start. You are starting with basically it, like enumerating a list of process identifiers, which if you're curious are just identifiers for each individual process that are like representations in numbers. So it's just a, you know, like I think one to like 10,000, 90,000, something like that. Um, numbers that are unique to each individual process. So you've got this list of PIDs. Now you open each process. For each PID that you get, you open the process that corresponds to that PID. And as a very, very like short, like general description of what a process is in terms of like the Windows API, it is an address space, a list of modules, a list of imports, things like that that are all specific to an individual process. You might think of processes as each time you click an executable, it starts a new process. That's true, but there are also more processes that you don't spawn that way, and there are different ways to spawn processes, but that's outside of the context here. Now, I hinted at it a second ago, each individual process has modules, at least one. A module is basically a piece of executable code that is being used by that process. So the reason why I say at least one is in order for, for you to start a process, it has to come from a module. So an executable, a DLL, things like that. Um, so we're going to enumerate all of the modules that are associated with the process. Like I said, this could be DLL. So you might have like a thousand DLLs associated with one individual process, or you might just have one. We are only interested in the first one. And I'm going to call your attention to this pro tip bubble right here. Um, so we're on part three and part three corresponds to this pro tip bubble. The first module that is returned in this essentially array of um, module handles is usually, and I believe always, but I'm going to say usually just to cover my own ass, it is usually the handle for the module that spawned the process itself. I imagine if you've got headless processes where the module is like, I guess deleted or taken out of the address space, I don't know if that's something that can happen, I'd have to do some more research on that then that may not be the case. But in every instance that I have come across, the first module that is returned by git um, or yeah, enum process modules is going to be the module corresponding to the executable or DLL that started the process. So if you spin up a process with proc.exe, which is just some random executable, it may import a thousand different DLLs and all these other different modules. But the first thing that is returned in your enum process modules call is going to be a handle to the module that corresponds to proc.exe. Now, how do you get proc.exe? Point four, <laughs> supposed to be four. Um, point three, number two, or point four, get to the first module handle, um, basically the, the, the base name for that module handle. I don't know why I tripped over that. Um, so the base name is basically the name of the executable that actually like corresponds to that module. So if we are returning from enum process modules, the first element in that array, which is going to be the element that corresponds to the module that spawned the process itself, 
then get module base name is going to return the name of the executable that spawned that process. So that is the very, very high level explanation of how that works. Let's go down here. Oop. Let's go down here and take a look at how the code looks. Now this is a, a really spaghetti code kind of way of explaining how these functions work together. But essentially we're going to start with enum processes. That is going to return an array of PIDs. For each PID, we are going to open that process, which is going to give us a process handle. That process handle is going to be passed to enum process modules, which is going to return an array of module handles. We are going to take the zeroth or the first item within that array and pass it to get module base name, which is going to return a string, which corresponds to the actual executable that started that process. So now we get to the five billionth time that my ass has gotten saved by a game hacker. Let's talk about Lonami. Um, Lonami wrote this um, tool that they call Memo, um, which is basically a methodology of like injecting, I believe it's a code injection tool written in Rust. Um, and we'll get to code injection later. That's one of the reasons why I'm going into like process enumeration and stuff like that. Um, but in new Lunami, Lunami also wrote a great blog right here. I'm going to link that like right at the top of the description that explains the whole process of how you do all of this with the Windows API and Rust. I'm not going to just completely rip the blog off and I'm not going to completely entirely rip Lonami's uh, memo code off. I'm going to leave links to all of us in the description. Absolutely incredibly written blog. Um, and I believe by somebody who's like English as a second language, um, that they did explain that they're fluent in English. It's a very, very well written blog. Um, so I basically um, yoinked the code from memo and made a couple of changes for it here, um, but pretty much kept it all the same. Um, so I called it Rusty Prox. I'm going to, you know, I, I don't know that I'm going to upload this or anything like that because there's really no point since there's memo. Um, but this is basically all code that was pulled from memo. Um, so we're creating a couple of structs up here. Um, this is basically a struct that's just going to hold the PID to um, name mapping. Um, this process right here is going to hold a PID to handle mapping. Um, so this right here is not super important, just basically in telling um, Rust how we actually format um, printing out the process. Um, but let's go down to main. So let's start with main. So what we're doing here is we're going to enumerate the procs first, and that is going to return, you know, uh, uh, VS Code is great about giving us these very, very ugly looking, like, um, explanations of what your code does, and they just constantly get in my way. Um, but this is going to return a vector of U32s. Now U32s are just integers, and these integers correspond to PIDs. So basically what we're doing with unwrap, I'm going to do like a, a probably a separate video on unwrap and, and rust error handling because it's great and also frustrating. Unwrap is basically saying, if there is a problem with enum prox, which is our method that we wrote for enumerating the PIDs, if there's a problem with enum prox, panic, just completely brick the program. Um, I haven't run into any problems so far, which is great. Um, so we're going to turn it into an iterator, which is basically allowing us to iterate over each individual piece of, um, or each individual PID. Um, then we're going to open that process. And what the process open method does is it returns a handle um, or essentially a handle mapping um, for that PID. So it's going to give us a PID mapped to a um, process handle. Then we're going to map over all of those processes and if we get any errors, we're just going to basically throw that away. Um, and then we're going to create a process item. Now, um, this process item right here, um, yeah, right here, sorry, couldn't find it. Um, this process item is going to take a name. Now, name is created by calling the dot name function. Um, that dot name function we're going to talk about a little bit more at, at length because that actually takes the majority of, you know, the, the Windows API like code. Um, but basically then we collect it all into a list and we don't actually use processes for anything, which is cool. Um, so right here is where we actually print out the data. 
Um, let me go ahead and run this so you know what it actually looks like. And we get a list of processes that are running alongside their PIDs. So I've got a bunch of shit running on my desktop right now. Um, so let's pop back over here and dive a little bit more into the code. So the first thing that's really worth going into is process open. Um, process open does exactly what you would think it would do. It will return basically a um, process struct um, that holds a mapping of the PID to a handle to the process. Now, Windows handles are their own thing that I'm going to do like another video on. If I've already done it by the time you watch this, you can see it in the description. But a handle basically holds all of the information for a process or a module. So there are module handles and there are process handles. They're two different things. But at, basically, at the end of the day, they're integers, but they allow you to do different things with that, you know, that process. They're like unique identifiers, essentially. Um, so we go down here, we open the process up. Here is the individual um, pieces of information that basically tell the Windows API what access rights we want. Um, you can pop over to... Um, so this is a really good MSDN article on basically how this works in CC++. And if we go to MSDN open process, pop that open, um, it will explain the access rights down here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Yeah, process access rights. Um, so that'll explain it in this article. All of this will be linked in the description so you can kind of look it up, but you can also just Google MSDN open process or whatever other function you're trying to use. Um, so we are basically going to create an instance of this struct that maps the PID to the handle. Um, this handle is right there. Um, so we are getting that handle from this function right here. Um, and we are creating that association and actually returning that association. Right down, yeah. Yeah, so we're returning that association from this function. All right, so that's how we're opening the process up. This is essentially a wrapped up way to call open process with the correct access rights, all of that fun stuff. Um, so the next important one is name. So name is the one that actually does the majority of the heavy lifting here. Um, basically what name is going to do is actually point, let's see, right here. Um, basically point three and point four of um, the general process overview that we went over. So if we look at name, it's going to take in the process type. Um, so that is that, that process struct that has already been initialized with a handle to the process. So we've already got a legitimate handle to the process within this struct. Um, so right here, we're going to enumerate the process modules. We're going to store the result of that. Um, let's see. In module. So here's, here's the fun thing. Basically, module in the way that you're supposed to call enum process modules should be a pointer to an array of module handles. If you just hand enum process modules one individual uninitialized H module instance, then it's just going to plop the first one in there and you're good. So you don't have to deal with the array. You don't have to take that extra, um, that extra space, anything like that. Um, because as you can see right here, we are only using the size of one H module, not the size of one H module times however many H modules we want to return. Um, so this right here would be what we actually like worry about if we wanted to return more H modules. The, the needed size right here is going to tell us, hey, you know, you, you basically, you allowed for enough space for one H module, you know, um, piece or, or one H module. Um, you should have, uh, you know, initialized this much space in order to hold all of them. Anyways, so basically that's a convoluted way of just taking the first H module that we're interested in. And that's the one that's actually going to be the one that like, um, initialized that process. So let's go down here. We've got, um, that module. And basically what we're doing here is we're saying, we're assuming that we got a valid H module here. Um, pop down here, we're going to create a buffer that's going to eventually hold the name of that um, module or the base name of that module, sorry. And we're going to call get module base name. So we're going to pass in the handle to the process, the handle to the module, and a pointer to that buffer. 
that's going to store the actual um, name of that uh, or the actual base name of that module. And we are going to go down here and return it, basically casting it as a string. Um, so casting it from a pointer to a string to a string. So that is a lot of talking. Um, this is significantly better than the CC++ code um, that ended up being just nasty the last time I wrote it. Um, I love the way that Rust has implemented the Windows API. Um, the way that you kind of write the code, I guess I can kind of return and show, show you what I'm talking about. Um, it's taking some getting used to to start writing code like this. I believe this is like the functional programming way of doing things because it's all very function based. Each function is passing on its return variable to the next function, to the next function, to the next function. That's not the way that I'm used to writing code, but I'm getting used to it. Um, and every like code example that I've seen for like larger code bases in Rust use this kind of syntax. Um, so I'm getting used to it. It's it's weird, but I, I'm you know it's taking some getting used to. Anyways, um, I will be streaming tonight about 8.30, I think. Um, so pop along and we're going to go over a little bit more process enumeration stuff. Um, I think on Thursday's stream, tonight we're going to be doing all the, um, the, the fun crack me stuff to learn about reverse engineering. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.